Hello, welcome to the Holy Hour. This is Gavin. This is the All Cure Podcast. And this is not the official start to this episode. Um, some might call it a disclaimer. More is a, uh, a header. A heading. What do you call it? Anyway, um, this is um, being recorded right after the three nights in Madison Square Garden on the tour. We're throwing a lot of these at you here as the tour is winding down. But, um... I'm mere days away from seeing the band in the flesh Thursday night of this week. Uh, so that's only two more days as this is being recorded. I, and then I'll get to see them in Charlotte and then Atlanta on Friday. And um, I wanted to just get this episode out to you guys before we see them, though, because it was something special about two months ago now, maybe. Uh, Donald came down and we recorded some future episodes. And... Um, and it's always fun when Dom comes down. We don't get to hang out too often, you know. So we got Cure talking. And um, this was when the f- tour first kicked off. So it was like, I think, right after the Austin show. And uh, everything was fresh. And there's a lot of theories that were going around. And you can just tell the excitement in our voices as the tour was kicking off. And um, so as you're listening to this, some of these theories have already been debunked. We pretty much know what the what happened on the tour at this point but this was us foreshadowing exciting songs from the set list and um our hopes and dreams of what was to come on this tour and uh you know in cure true fashion don't rule anything out just uh last night apparently banana fish bones got debuted so they're still pulling a few new songs out and um the ultimate theme of this episode was supposed to be what are the ridiculous songs that we would love to hear in the set list but we know pretty much is impossible that they would never play. And uh, the joke was that Exploding Boy was pretty much on that list for both of us. And um, what do you know, they played it. So um, without further ado, I'll give you this episode. Me and Donald back in action here. Um, if our voices sound a little funny, it might be because we've had a few beers at this point. So um, so take that into consideration. Hopefully it translates into fun cure talk. And um, without further ado, here's uh, myself and Donald discussing rare tracks that could or could not be played on the 2016 tour. Thanks for listening on The Holy Hour. Hey, welcome to The Holy Hour. Thanks for joining us. This is uh, the All Cure podcast, the original all cure number one (laughs) podcast Um, the first and in fact Mm -hmm. if you were to ask mr robert smith himself i do believe he would probably say that of all the cure podcasts this might in fact be his favorite podcast because it's literally the only one is that why what's (laughs) wrong with people has anyone ever thought about anything ever are we just that bad with search engines? And we're idiots. <laughs> Clearly. We're, we're giant dipshits and we came up with this. Like, what does that say about you, society? Come on. What does that say about you, the world? Let's all just pull it together and do better than me Jesus. and Donald. <laughs> Christ. Like, we're the forefront on this? this you is, idiots. This is 2016. All is right. it? It I is. It was 2015. No, that was last year. See, I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, you're just you're learning. <laughs> I am Gavin, and I'm joined with the bad boy of podcasting, <laughs> Donald. Hey guys, this is Donald. Thanks for uh, coming down here from Richmond. Yeah, your new home. Oh, I moved. I've uh... since we last spoke. Donald has covered a lot of ground. I know. I moved. He did. Sold a house and bought a house and. Uh... I recommend uh, to everyone that, like, if they sell a house and then they buy a house, stay in the house that you bought forever. Because it's the worst experience. One time purchase? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, my mother refers to, um, she like, my parents have moved and they kind of bought their house to kind of retire in. Uh-huh. And she refers to it as, um, it's our death house. Oh, that puts a warm glow on the... Jesus Christ, <laughs> it's the darkest shit. And and uh, I gave my mom so much crap. It's like, that's the darkest this shit. This is our death she's house. Like, yeah, and she explains it. She's like, no, this is the house just 
we're going to live and die in. It's the last <laughs> house we're going to buy. And it'll be yours someday. Uh, and it's like, so I get your death house? <laughs> like, Do you know which room you would like to die in? I know. Wow. Well, it's, yeah. But, uh, I see what she's saying, but it won't, yeah. That's I'm a, not thinking that's about That's a this. weird title. You don't want to put it titles is. on a house like <clears throat> Especially my, the death house. This will be my polio house. I know. <laughs> That's why I get scurvy. <laughs> this is my scurvy home. <laughs> I got gout in that. Yeah. <laughs> my gout house. But, Jeez. Well, hopefully it won't be your death house or I your know. scurvy house. But I am going to stay in this house for a long time. I, hopefully it's not my death house. But <laughs> Well, you're in the other one for a pretty long time. How long were you in that one? I don't know, like 12 years or something. Nice. And I just didn't like that. It was a horrible house. It was my horrible house. house. It wasn't my death house. It was my horrible house. It's your prison house. (laughs) No, it was a nice house. It was all right. The backyard was nice. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Hmm. down from uh, Richmond. Richmond. Big city boy now. Yeah. The bad boy of podcasting (laughs) is now the big bad city boy. Big boy of Richmond. (laughs) Look at me, the big boy. (laughs) Dang. You're just getting all kinds of titles. I know. And now you've come down <laughs> here to Asheville. I know. To do a Cure podcast. It's good to... Uh, you thought everybody was having too good of a time with this t- 2016 tour. So you just came down here to piss on all of the later material, didn't you? <laughs> everybody was feeling too good about the Cure. So Donald decided to... Sh- just kidding. Yeah, Donald Downer. <laughs> Donald Downer. Coming down to piss all over <laughs> the parade. <laughs> I, I do kind of want to, but... Then I, then I saw... Uh, we watched a clip of, like... Uh, some clips um, of them on their playing their new stuff. And, like, the latest tour. The Austin show? Yeah, like, the yeah. Austin show. And... Third show, I believe, of the tour so far. So still pretty early. And like spoiler alert, they played <laughs> Exploding Boy, and it was it was pretty satisfying. And did it feel? Did it hit your standards? It did a bit. Cool. It it, it actually did a bit. Um, As it should. It was amazing. Just the fact they're playing it in any degree, but that mm-hmm. felt like they nailed it. And I like I like the whole turn that they're taking with this tour like because i don't i don't want to see them actually like yeah i didn't want to believe you were on file saying I, i'll never see them again you'll never see them but you are you're gonna go see them in charlotte i know and i did it for the podcast like if i'm gonna uh, talk it's, as it's much tax deductible it's tax deductible <laughs> and uh good luck with that <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I have to... Oh, I think you will be turned around, Bright Eyes, and you will see <laughs> something amazing. <laughs> but so you like the what you've seen of the set list so far with a few surprises and the old hits and the good balance of the set list? Or are you just getting the general vibe that it's going to be a good one? Like, I, I, I don't want to look at them. Okay. You probably won't see them too good from our seats. Mm-hmm. Good. <laughs> so. But I want to listen to it. Okay. Like, I just want to listen to it. And okay. I just want to hear the songs. I'll be... But, and they're playing, like, such a, a nice... I like their angle. And this yeah. is the only thing I re- I'm kind of excited about. Like, I was kind of shitting on it. Uh-huh. Because I... Sh- shit on it it's what uh, you do it's what i do i'm a bad boy he's the bad boy i'm a bad boy the cure podcast (laughs) he is i'm one of two (laughs) he is of the two (laughs) you are the bad boy of all podcasts as far as i'm concerned (laughs) but definitely of the cure holy hour podcast (laughs) you're the the bad boy of (laughs) what are you the nice guy (laughs) bad boy and the good boy i'm just a good old boy (laughs) Oh, boy, I'm, like, I'm like two Duke boys wrapped up Duke in, boys into one. one. <laughs> Jumping over those Cure songs, exactly. But so, um, but yeah, as far as what you've seen so far, <laughs> you're feeling you're feeling good. I I I, I, I sadly little, am a little tingle. I'm a little disappointed in myself oh. because I like the uh, the songs that they're choosing to play are fucking crazy. Yeah, they're so dope. Like. 
They like they'll, it sounds like they're doing like whole encores of like chunks of like yeah. here's like a seventeen seconds chunk. Yeah, what a great way to do that. That's I think that's dope. like it's like you just grab like four songs from a specific album and bash them all together. Yeah, man. it's like such a good little like taste. Such you know? good idea. Yeah. Such a good idea. It is clever, and like because it's. Like, the whole chunk of the set is a little scattered, and there's no real rhyme or reason to a lot of it, mm-hmm. other than just being, like, hits mixed with deep cuts with cool songs, and but there's no real pattern for right. what I've seen, but, uh... But They're then just, like, keeping it things, loose? Yeah, but I'm a, it's almost like the chaos is the pattern, and that's cool, because you, like, yeah. you don't know. Which kind of brings us to the theme of this episode is rare songs mm-hmm. leading up to these shows. Like a lot of us, you know, this is a pretty long tour. Like, I'm, we're not going to see them until the end of June. And the tour started, what are we on, May something 10th at least? Mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell day this will air or when we're recording at this point. <laughs> but um, somewhere early in May. So we still got to wait, you know? This is yeah. like Christmas where you got to like hang in there until the end of the month. And it's like, oh, <laughs> they might be completely sick of all these songs by the time they get to us. And who knows? They're really weird with that stuff. Maybe but they'll go deeper. Deeper, you who know? knows? Yeah, and I mean, it seems... But you kind of blew your wad on that first show, though. Yeah, but I mean, it you... seems like a combo thing, and I think going back to what Arusha and Jeff said, they probably do have, like, three sets kind of based around, like, those three yeah. nights at Madison Square Garden. That, that makes it total... totally right. Yeah, He's I think that... absolutely right. It really does make sense for you, and then you just interchange them, but you basically mm-hmm. have three really... But I mean, even... Saying they have three sets isn't like they have three hour long sets. It's no, like they, three three hour long like, sets. Was, wasn't he saying <laughs> they have like 30 songs? Yeah. And, and then it, that's, yeah. That it makes so like, much sense. It's like, yeah, it's like. So you have three sets worth of about 30 songs, almost 28, 30 songs. Like you can mix that there. up over like three, yeah. sh- like, like have three shows, mix up I mean, 30 that's songs. Still, that's 90 songs pretty much ready for a tour. That's so hard. No, I just mean, playing like 30 songs. Yeah. But I mean. For like all of three shows. Yeah. So you can mix and match those 30 songs over three different shows. Right. And still keep it loose and not get bored of it, you know? Because like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no band's going to remember 30 fucking songs and, like, nail them. But, like, but, that's I mean, a, that's but in a, fact, they did. They no one's going to know, like, 90. 90. That's no what they need to do, really. Because if, if they play 30 songs one night and then the next night... They're not going to play a completely different set. They almost did in New Orleans, which... No, but you have 30 songs and you mix and match those over... Technically, but in New like Orleans, a, they a played a whole other set. Like, it was only six songs that overlap. <laughs> so, I mean, that's like a whole... Don't make me do math. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not doing math on this fucking podcast. I'll walk out right as now. As far as, like, rehearsal, they need to know tight 90... No way, 90 songs. Probably not that many, but like 80 it's like something. like fucking 30 songs. No band can know 90 fucking songs. Well, clearly they already know 60 songs. Just about. They did 28-ish. Both nights in New Orleans. It's 51 songs they did, actually. Somebody put the number up. And they're not going to play any of those songs again. No, they'll mix and match them, but it, that's what so I mean. Insane. But, like, from one night to the next. It's the dumbest argument. <laughs> but it's more than 30 songs <laughs> that they need to know really tight. You think? Um, yeah. I don't know. I think 30. It's Well, no. They already proved that they played 50 songs. Jesus. Yeah. No way. They did. <laughs> it's like they played 28 the first night, and then they played like another, whatever the difference between 28 to 50 is, the second night. It was like a whole different set. They didn't overlap any of the fucking Jesus. songs. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. And then like they said, they have like a whole third nights probably. I mean, they've been playing all these songs for like 30 years but not <laughs> like, really a lot of them they have yeah some were newer than others like, but like exploding boy they played on the third night which they didn't even play on yeah. those first two nights and it was tight that's insane he seemed a little winded after the video and no it was fuck. a little tight but like the whole band that song's so hard to play yeah. live yeah so I almost that drummer was kind of afraid that they're not gonna hold on to that one too much I really hope they make it to June yeah. it, but I'm like oh I'd love to see that but, um, That's so many songs. That's so dope. Yeah, I, I I'm really shocked at the angle they're taking with this <laughs> tour. Like I didn't expect it. I was thinking like some schlocky, 
shit that I've been avoiding and that they've kind of done. I felt like, like, just thinking of a couple, like, Shitty. When was the last time you saw him on the Curiosa thing? Like yeah. for the self titled album? Yeah. Like at the Curiosa thing. That the... was I guess heavy of the of that album, but still mixed in with hits and stuff. But yeah, yeah they, I mean the last little, time I'm... they were a little darker and a little harder. Yeah, like, yeah. And that's and I'm happy with Makes that. Sense. Like that that's what I wanna leave um like my memory of seeing them, like Yeah. Because I've just seen so many artists and bands like just trying to milk money out of yeah. what they're doing, and it gets so gross and stupid. Yeah. And but I don't think any and, of that. And I was and I was just so worried of seeing that. Yeah. But they haven't. Nah. Like they've managed to like maintain a line. Like. And I think like it's respectable. Like. Yeah. yeah. And then this tour, like it really like. It's clearly it, work put into it and love and thought. And, and they're playing dope songs. Like, they're yeah. going through their deep catalog. They're playing shit that they, like, they did on the Crow thing. Like, yeah, yeah, burn. Like that dude was saying, like, uh, burn us all dope. Yeah. And, and that song is dope as fuck, man. Yeah, that song rolls. And, like, everyone's wanted that for so long. Yeah, dude, you know? shit. It's like, everyone's just, that's always been, like, the cure song that you just, Oh man, it's so good. It's but such a fantastic I hope, song. Man. Again, I hope they don't like just get sick of it by the time they get to us. But I don't know. They gotta like take note. Like the crowd's uh, gotta uh, be going ape shit every time mm-hmm. they go when they hear like that and like no fucking bored. like bird. Like, yeah. like they would look like what song? Or, like is Twilight this? Garden. The, the, the I know, like Twilight thing. Garden. It's like they've never played that. They gotta be flipping out for that. Like a. Yeah. Audibly, you know, like where the kid's like, oh, here, yeah, do this. You want this motherfucker? <laughs> yeah, you want this, you want this like, asshole? So, I mean, that's got to be something. Mm-hmm. So, I would think. And, no shit. I mean, the only other fact is it's just got to be if it's like annoyingly taxing on them. You know, like Exploding Boy, I can almost see just because it's not the easiest. Same because they're <laughs> yeah. old and they can't. Yeah. Not taxing in a way that they can't, but it's just like, or it's just to the point where it's just like, oh, God, this isn't fun. And, you know, and they don't quite see why everyone loves it so much, but maybe, you know. That'd be I don't fun know, as hopefully. shit. Like, yeah, I mean, I was. Just thinking of being in their shoes. Like, oh, yeah. Like, that'd be so fun. Just like, you want this, assholes? And just nail it. Like, yeah. you want this old deep cut? What? Yeah. What yeah. were you guys expecting? Because, huh? I mean, really, the bar, in a sense, that, it gets to set have so that much. Just your fucking holster. Just yeah, like, yeah. Psh, psh, psh. To the point where it gets, the bar gets set lower, you know, like you play something like Fascination Street or just like Heaven, you mm-hmm. gotta fucking nail it and everything's gotta be like the best you've ever heard it. But like, I don't even want to hear Fascination. <laughs> I don't want to hear Fascination Street. I don't want to hear ever Just again. Like Heaven. Oh, I just like Heaven, yeah. I don't want to hear In Between Days. Uh, don't want to hear Love Song. Like, uh, I've heard him a thousand yeah. billion fucking times. But my point being, and maybe along the lines of what you're saying, is even if you cut or you're a little sloppier than you'd like with Exploding Boy, everyone's going to still, like, fucking oh. flip out for oh, it. Yeah. You know? So it's kind of like... It's kind of neat. <laughs> but, I mean, as a musician, I totally see that right angle, too, where you don't want to... You know, if they feel like they're kind of schlepping their way through some song that they don't play. Yeah, but, I, I mean, mean satisfaction-wise, you kind of, like... We didn't even nail it, and they're still like oh, flipping yeah. it. You know what I mean? It would make it gross. Like yeah. we could do anything; yeah. it doesn't matter. You know, you could see how they would just be a little like, yeah. you know, and it'd probably be more like they would even pull it on themselves. Or like, well, it's just not really a song that's meant to be played live. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's like, they have the respect. Yeah, and they have the respect for the fans. Like, I that's, don't know. That's or why, for, they or have they have them. respect for themselves. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. more of that line, but. Because yeah. that would be the worst, actually, to see them, like, just fail as musicians right. and, and just, like, just and just farting out songs. Stuff and stuff that they couldn't quite just nail. Just farting them out. And everyone's yeah. like, whatever, they like it. They've never done that. Like, nah. their musicianship has not faltered once. Like, yeah, it's like so... they can play the fuck out of whatever they want and they can... <laughs> it's Dude. so, like, it's so a rare thing. to see a sloppy cure show yeah you know it's like um i've never seen it personally i mean i'm like so invested that live by the time i'm there i think i'm probably so hyped that i'll love whatever the fuck's going on but it, yeah but um look even back i at mean but there's so much shows. footage on yeah and youtube and stuff and i know it's not technically the same but like 
I've never seen anything, but it's weird. I have seen like stuff where it's not quite as good or it doesn't seem as passionate or whatever, yeah. which is funny because it's good in the sense that it makes them seem more human. But yeah. It, um, I've only ever seen one that was almost like... A shitty show? Yeah. There's really? that, it's called like Bizarre Festival or something, and it was for like Wild Mood Swings later tour. Ugh. And it was weird, though, but they just seemed hammered. It was weird. Like, you yeah, had, it's like so are, odd like aren't they always i mean like definitely that, that probably says a lot. I would think, that really says a lot when they look drunk i think like, but i mean <laughs> but it's still weird because it was like such a long show still where yeah. they would fucking nail stuff you could have a lot like, of drinks in a long like a three hour show <laughs> right. and i mean it's just i can get those, drunk in 30 minutes and like, like <laughs> sure there's so many songs that he can do like in his sleep yeah so, i mean a lot of them sounded fine they've been playing it forever but there was a few on there like and he's kind of the Notorious for like those eras, where, like even around disintegration, where he would mm. stumble on lyrics and stuff and yeah. just kind of mumble shit, and it would be like, oh, it's "That's a, cool, he's it's doing a it." Wordy fucking record. He's doing it different, but but then there was it was weird on this one footage. I'll put a link to this if we all put this whole full episode as is. Mm-hmm. But um, it's great. Just I mean, it was almost more enjoyable as a Cure fan watching it because it like shows that like. Ooh, all right, maybe they are human. I mean, it seems like yeah. it was like a hundred degrees and in Brazil or some shit, and they don't really Warriors. care. It is, some they're, festival. And they're probably like, it was like wild mode swings to her, and who and knows? They're like what was twenty going. dates into a yes, show. Yes, I mean, know? I'm sure there's a billion understandable factors. They tour the shit. Like when they tour, they fucking yeah, tour. Even with this current one, it's like Jesus. It's probably huge as fuck. Yeah. So I mean, they really are they doing like whole worldwide jam like it's gone yeah i mean it's gotten to that point where it's like a few months here then they're going to europe and then they just announced a bunch of australia ones so they're definitely that's dope like they're australia of, yeah a couple of the big festivals there and and then a few like normal shows i think too so in new zealand so yeah like asia and which was weird that there isn't like a new album like why that's so dope that they're not. Yeah, that's a strange. I don't. It seems like the, it would be really weird that you'd do all that for just the sake of playing. But I mean, you got almost forty years worth of material. You know, do you really, need a fucking new? Yeah, record? you don't need it. I mean, it's almost more. You know. I, I think that's exactly that why they're going through their deep catalog. Yeah, like, and it's just kind of because they I don't have a like, new record. And there's like no one wants to hear a new record. Oh, well, some. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, that's the other podcast. But um, <laughs> but I mean, along those lines, I mean, I'm sure some people do. But yeah, like, and like, and they've been scheme of shit. Yeah, and like when you have when you can play three hours, and there's deep cuts, there's hits, and there's even new songs, and then there's still shit that you didn't hear. Yeah, I and mean, that says a lot about a band. I mean, and I think it's just like huge test of it. Like yeah. how how many you good songs you can play three nights worth of a totally different set each <laughs> night, and there's still probably gonna be something you didn't hear that you'd yeah. want. To hear. I mean, it's just like that's fucking great, you know? It's like how many bands? Yeah, I mean that's. A, so many. I mean, just the fact that there's so many like B sides, and that's technically the theme of this episode that we haven't gotten to yet. Is how we all have our uh, secret rare tracks. Wish that we hope they play. They're playing everybody's all of them, and they're doing it. They're, they're playing all of them. them. <laughs> they're already like chipping away, like on these ones that we haven't heard. But like, I was telling Gab, like this is a dumb topic yeah. to go over because they're they they're literally doing it all. Like, what am I gonna say? Like, I want them to play "Exploding Boy." I want them to play "Screw." Like, <laughs> right. it's like check check. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, deep I mean, cuts on like a whole seventeen seconds encore. Yeah. Like, okay. I mean, they've always been good at that. I mean, I always yeah. felt like that. That was like them and Morrissey. Like, not to bring that. They hit the eras. Again. Like they, they. At a certain yeah. point, Morrissey it took him a lot longer to like start incorporating the Smith songs and stuff in. But like at a certain point, that was, and that's that, understandable. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, that's like a whole different band and shit. So he's got his own bag of. More yeah. issues, of course. But, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, like but I mean, how fucking cool is that? That like at a certain point the band realizes, and then, you know, it doesn't even really knock the later albums, but just in the sense that it's like, you know, you're at that point where you can take the two best songs mm-hmm. off that album, you can take the two best songs off this album, and if you stretch that back forty years, yeah. you got 
It's like, three. you want to see how many push-ups I can do? Like, yeah, fucking 2,000. It's like, it's boosh, fucking... boosh, 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 boosh. Awesome song, awesome song. I mean, like, even a band like Wilco does that now I'm really sure. well. And it's like, they're not even, you know, shave about 10 to 15 years off the cure, probably. Even, you know, it's like... It's like, both those bands have to, like, shave songs off. Like, how many yeah, good songs do we have to just, take away to make just three hours? Like, right. a lot. It's, like, crazy. Like, they have other like, awesome songs to yeah, go. There's no, like part of like a cure show where you're like well i'm definitely just gonna go get a beer and piss now yeah. you know i mean most bands i mean bands that i love i'm doing yeah even more so you like you know during like the 15 minute of Mita's murder i'm like well if i'm gonna get a beer i might the song of Mita's murder i might that just go best. it's great but i mean you don't need to see that it song's been coming show. up on my shuffle all the time of it's so and it's so funny. And I'm like, Jesus Christ! But yeah. like, then sometimes I'm like, it doesn't help that he shows like animals being slaughtered. I know. It's just like, oh, <laughs> we get it, man. It's, it's, like, it's like, good God. It's but, like, but I mean, yeah, I can't think of any Cure so song funny. where you know maybe that's what is that final niche that makes me like a little higher on the Cure totem pole than Morrissey. But it was like, I don't think I, it's gonna be so hard going to see him and not like for three hours know. you know like i gotta like like drink a beer <laughs> it's like what the fuck if you're like about to piss your pants and stuff what do you go to i mean it's a like, fucking diaper yeah i gotta wear a di- <laughs> no but i mean we're classier than this this is the number one cure podcast <laughs> we don't need to talk about pissing ourselves <laughs> This is so, come on, we gotta. We gotta. So any uh, hey. anyone that's listening, you can send in your stories about pissing yourself at cure shows. Yeah. At the holy hour gmail. No. Dot net. No. That's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's so hard for you. <laughs> uh, um, it's just my email, gavinconnor at gmail dot com. But go to the holy hour Facebook page. Just yes. punch in Holy Hour Cure Podcast. You'll find it on Facebook. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited for the show. Um, mm-hmm. I think they will hopefully at least play some of these rare shows when we see them, or rare uh, songs when we see them. Um, all right, well, what do you got? Is a top five. Should I tell you mine And while you yes. stew? Um, yeah. Songs, ridiculous. Here was the initial topic that I tossed to Donald. Um, ridiculously unpractical they will never play these songs but wouldn't it be awesome if they did mm-hmm. list and we all have that list and i think up until this tour exploding boy and twilight garden were probably on most people's list yes and maybe probably not screw but it was cool that they played that <laughs> but uh I, I like i like the uh and there's even a few and we were talking about earlier is like there's songs that they played when the album came out but not necessarily since then, you know, like there's like a, a lot of songs that, you know, at some point I'm sure. I like uh, all the deep cuts from like head on the door and the top for some reason. Yeah. Like, yeah. And the last tour before this, they were playing like banana fish bones and shit. Yeah. And like that'd be fucking sweet to see. Yeah. Sure. Like I'm, you know, I, we haven't seen them that many times. I'm mm-hmm. shocked by like, you know, Hearing these people like, no seeing shit. the cure a hundred times and the, uh, 78 times. Arusha said she's got to be close to a hundred. Arusha and Jay. Jeff said Jeff? 25, 27 maybe. Somewhere around there. The high 20s. Yeah, I think he um, said something like he saw him like 50 fucking times. Or some shit. I don't know if that, high, but even <laughs> so, I don't know. And then like, you know, there's, crazy there's other people like, in these cure groups. I saw him like four so, times. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen him like four times. This would be my ninth and tenth. But, but I mean, that's still like not nearly that's as many intense. as I wish. So yeah. many shows. I mean, you have to follow them at some point to get those numbers, you'd think. Yeah. Because we've just kind of seen them as they've come to our town. Yeah. Like, I, I saw them in Coachella that time, uh, 2003, I guess, before the self titled album came out. That was kind of right. the only destination time I've gone somewhere to see them, which was fucking amazing out there that was like right before coachella got super yeah huge it was like them the pixies had just reunited for that for like the first time in radiohead i'm not even a huge radiohead fan but it was cool Mm. to see them with that and just like that was a great lineup it was so cool just seeing them out in the desert was that coachella yeah coachella's got just 
Shell is garbage. Yeah, well, I mean, it's I think awesome, you, you I'm sure. I probably saw but him, like, at, like, the... Yeah, I kind of felt like it, it, it took a turn cool. right after that one was, like, huge. And, and yeah, I mean, it was amazing. Like, I was so impressed because I didn't really know. I was just going through a bad breakup and just, like, whatever. I just wanted <laughs> to go out to California and I wanted to see The Cure. And yeah. Ended up in this fucking desert and, like, with my future wife. And yeah. And we were just... Having the best, and it was just such a perfectly laid out thing. I thought I'd be like stuck in some Bonnaroo field kind of shit, you mm-hmm. know? We're just like, oh god, I just want to drink or I just want like, water and I'm sunburnt. And yeah, I, I slept but in I mean, a it tent was, covered in piss. It other, was almost uh, like, not even your piss, <laughs> but like other like, people's piss. Some fucking California piss, but um, the, yeah, it was um, that's cooler pee. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a dry pee. It's <laughs> a dry pee. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the um. But, I mean, everything was laid out almost too well. There was, like, so many stages and, like... I mean, there's a lot of overlap that bugged me of bands that, like, I wanted to see, but I had to go to somebody else, and so mm-hmm. I could only watch half their set, and then I'd... Yeah, that stuff bugs me, but... But it was cool. I mean, like, there was, like, so many, like, bathroom options. Nobody was going bathroom to the... options? But, I mean, it was, like... You didn't... It was a desert. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't you even... You could pee anywhere. To but you didn't have to pee. That was the catch. Because you're fucking you so dehydrated. <laughs> like, I didn't even drink beer because I knew I'd die if I drank beer. It was, like, so hot. I was just, like, <laughs> chugging water. But you didn't have to pee. I was like... It's like, wow, I just watched, like, three shows in a row and drank, like, six waters. And I still don't so have to... so great. Pee. I don't have to pee. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm a, I was just like, I'm so hot right now. I'm, I'm close just... <laughs> to... Pa- like, out. My body is to clinging to every drop of water, but it was like, uh, fuck that. But it was awesome. By the time the harder part was, um, and more cure related was that I knew I wanted to get close to the stage for the the main stage for the cure. Is moisture? No, like it, it was, was moist up at the front. No, well, it was, but you know, in a festival way. But it was more um, that I had to like, like really plow into like. It turned out to be air and. Flaming Lips, which were both cool bands. You saw uh, Air? Yeah, so I saw them. Mm. But, I mean, I I didn't really care to see them, and I didn't really care about Flaming Lips. What? I mean, I like them, but I love them. But but I was like, you know, the cure's going on, so I'm like, just get off the stage. Air's a jam. Yeah, Air was awesome. And and Flaming Lips were awesome, of course, too. But it was the first time he debuted his bubble thing. And it, like, took him longer to get into the bubble than he thought. So it was, like, to me, it was a, wasn't cute, you know, Wayne getting into a bubble. It was, like, this dickhead's in between me and seeing The Cure. From, I was And want... at that point, it was, like, I hadn't seen him since Blood Flower, so it was driving me crazy. I was just, like, I just want to see The Cure. Do it. Get your fucking bubble. <laughs> Sing you shaming. Like, play your fucking song, <laughs> Right. Asshole. It was, like, like just play. Cut the fucking the actress and just play your fucking awesome songs. Totally. I was like, I was all for them, and I love Flaming Limps, but I was just like, just do it and get on with it so we can like, see the fucking cure. And I like, saw I saw But I had to, like, do the maneuvering to get to the front of the stage, so it was tough. But, but anyway, <laughs> Coachella, I felt like I digressed. I'm sorry. What are we talking no, about? No, rare this, songs? This, this ties in with the cure, though. Yeah. And with time. Mm-hmm. Um, the bubble of time. And but they've never done the bubble thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we almost were talking about that too. Like, and maybe it's a good time to bring it up now. Yeah. As far as gimmicks and stupid ideas, the Cure's very few on that. They've never been a band that like, Mm-mm. like. I mean, the fact that they had like those reflection tours and the trilogy ones and stuff. Those are like good ideas you know? like, and like where they like slap the three records together yeah and like, and like come up with some kind of like dope. Y- yeah i mean so many that's bands really especially like later bands that are like legacy bands i guess is the term now that everybody's using for it's like so gross. yeah i don't like it but like technically they would fall in that category i guess as far yeah. as what people say yeah but they haven't done it <laughs> but yeah they, they haven't, haven't done like been the, very few they haven't stupid done like ideas. the led zeppelin route yeah like and they're literally like like they're like Led Zeppelin, Pink, like like just generic yeah. media, like just the biggest bands, man, the most influential bands. It's yeah, like yeah. Pink Floyd, Led and Led Zeppelin, the Stones, like yeah, like they, when they would tour just with U two or something. 
you know, yeah, like, like you too. Just like, just <laughs> like we were talking on, about with you two, and like you just, know, and and I, they rely on the status, yeah, and just like they and like they the play Spider Man thing. Was like they I was play talking. that gross game in their image, like <laughs> yeah. they like they spend more time on their image, and just like. <laughs> How are we aging legacies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The and it's more just never like, done that. The cure even just never fucking with, done that. And I feel like gimmick is a good word because like so many bands just it's a fucking gimmick. They're trying to the Eagles. Find the Eagles kind of, are yeah, the yeah, grossest, yeah. biggest piece of <laughs> shit band. The grossest fucking example of like I almost stopped listening to music. Right. When I heard the Eagles. <laughs> just all together. Yeah. Just done. Like you ruined music. Yeah. Eagles. Wow. Because how they abused, like, like whatever they, the whatever gross fucking, like, festering <laughs> fucking herpy sore that they <laughs> grew. Wow. Like, and they exploited that and spread yeah. it like a fucking herpy. Like, they're fucking gross. <laughs> but the cure never did that. No. I feel like they've, they've stuck true to their guns that way, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and just the fact that, like, they're smart, kind of going back to what we are saying, I think I started to say with Morrissey, where they were, they pick, like, a, a set that they know, they got the hits sprinkled in there, they got the shit that they want to play in there, and then they got, like, a couple deep cuts there, yeah. in there you know, and, like... On this tour? It, this tour in particular, but I felt like even The Cure did it on that 413 tour mm-hmm. when i saw them that last time in charlotte it was pretty much the same thing it was like a three-hour show and they played like such so a great long. i mean it was like um probably a little more sprinkled in of like 413 because it was their newest album but like because they're running out of songs was because they were playing for three hours yeah but i mean these tours Jesus. this tour that's two and a half hours three hours it's pretty much what we're in for i mean i want like an hour and a half <laughs> I want an hour and a half of the fucking jeans. But I mean, that alone says so much about like what an awesome band they are. And they're not doing it in a self indulgent way. They can do it all way. day. Yeah. But I mean, he's, he's it gone. They're the fans, man. They are, though, in a sense. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's gone on the record of saying that he remembers seeing a Bowie show where it was like a Morrissey kind of thing where he played for like barely an hour and he had saved up all this money for oh, it. And that like, was a big Fuck. fucking deal. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, he's like, he knows that these shows cost more than the average show and yeah. it's a big fucking deal in the sense that they don't come here that often. And that they would don't be cunty. That actually would be cunty. Yeah. And, and that's for like fucking, an hour and a half. As much as I love yeah. Morrissey, that's Morrissey in a nutshell. Is like that fucking dude. One, if he shows up at all, I mean, he he'll, he'll cancel <laughs> if they're selling a goddamn taco with a bead in it in the lobby. He'll cancel the show almost. You know, I mean, he's notorious for that. And I have no, I have, and I, <laughs> I have so little respect for him because of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is and, shitty, but I mean, it, like, you know, he has his... Years, like, they play for fucking three hours in there. Yeah. I mean, he gets out there and they'll fucking... And they've gone on the record of saying that. They want the show to be good for fans. And the fact that they're throwing shit out there. They, if he hasn't played Exploding Boy <laughs> since 1985 or whatever it is, you know, it's like... <laughs> probably is because he doesn't fucking want to play it you know but the fact that if he's digging it out now that yeah. it means he's solely doing it because he mm-hmm. knows that people like us are gonna go ape shit for it you know it's like you know that i guess I'm as an artist that's a fucking big deal that's you know intense. it's like he, nobody's you know gonna hold it against him if he doesn't play exploding boy to show at this point but at the same time we're all secretly hoping it happens but yeah. you know and it's like and if you throw he those play, they are kind of playing um because they're a band uh-huh. they like they are really just going through the deep cuts yeah but and, i mean they're still sprinkling it in that's what's cool with the yeah. three hour shows you can still play in between days and just like heaven so like the people that got dragged to the show which is probably gonna be a lot you know yeah. like if people are just like fuck what i don't care about exploding boys just play just like heaven then like and they're still gonna play it and like there's gonna be tons of shit that people are just happy to hear and then there's gonna be stuff that people are just like what the fuck and that's gonna be awesome and I was thinking, like, like uh, just 
<laughs> how bad it would be to just sit through a really shitty band for three hours. <laughs> but like, this I mean, is that thoughts even really, crossed my mind. What like, curious like, is, is like somebody really brings like their new girlfriend or boyfriend to it and just watch like, a three hour oh Smash God. Mouth show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even like fucking like a giant band that I just don't care about, like you two. Like if they played like three hours, I'm be like, yeah, I'm sure I dig like a half hours worth, maybe. <laughs> but like there would be. I so hope they play much. those two songs. Songs yeah, I like. there's gonna be so yeah. much stuff that I would just be like, oh my god, you know, like just stop, yeah. please stop, so I could go back to my hotel or home, and you know, it's like, but I mean, I, I literally feel like that when this show ends, this cure one, if it's two and a half hours, two hours mm-hmm. even, I'm gonna be like, oh, they didn't play love song, they didn't play, you know, there's gonna be shit that I'm just like. Damn, I knew they're playing it on this tour. Nice and that's the the catch, like, is seeing, and I kind of touched on that with peaking and stuff on set list and yeah. stuff. That's the downside of all this is, like, when we see them, they might not play Exploding Boy, they might not play Burn, you know, and it's just like, I'm sure it'll still be cool, and they might throw a few other surprises out there, but, like... You looked up the show's skirt. Yeah. Before you really earned the right to get in it. Exactly. You know? I feel a little, a little dirty. Yeah, little. you should. Let it let <laughs> it be a thing. guilt trip me, man. Let that it be a thing, dude. <laughs> well, no. I mean, is it better not to know? Sometimes. Like I said, maybe it would be like amazing. If maybe you, it would, maybe it wouldn't. But it'd be like really cool if I had no idea they were going to play the songs and then they did. That would be the ultimate feeling. But I mean, come on. Because I, I, I nobody, imagine. Nobody has that willpower. I, I imagine like I do. I'm just about to explain how I do. You're just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how the internet works. <laughs> 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 but um, but I'm just thinking because I, I wasn't going to go see them really uh-huh. but figure I'm doing a podcast about the cure so mm-hmm. I should why would you not go I, see I it? should do my due diligence I mean I know this is more of the in defense of later years episode but why mm-hmm. why would you not have the even urge to just buy a ticket like as soon as you knew it was going on sale like, it's like, so weird to me like, even if you love them all the way up, like, say you don't like the new stuff, fine. I mean, it's not like you're offended by the new stuff. <laughs> it's like you just don't really have anything up to about blood flowers, I'd guess. Like, we'll do the quick version of the Defending the Years. But why would you not? I mean, that's like a fucking 20 years worth of shit that you love. <laughs> like, why would you not want to see it still? <laughs> Balls. I'm going to grab a cigarette. <laughs> All right. Well, should we pause there? Yeah. <laughs> all right. I do have to interject here to inform you all that Donald, in fact, did not have a clear answer for that question, even while outside smoking. Um, so we'll take it as, a, as at least a draw for defense of the later years for now. And, um, you know, just the idea that he's only really unsatisfied with about two to three albums out of 13. But it was about 3 a.m. He's not here to officially defend himself, so we'll um, resume the podcast with a focus on rare tracks being played at current live shows. Thank you, and now back to your program. To wrap up this wonderful episode of The Holy Hour, (sighs) Rarities is on everybody's mind on the Mm -hmm. 2016 tour. It looks like they're popping up. People are happy. Twilight Garden. Twilight Garden. So far, screw... Exploding boy, all I want, burn. People are feeling good. good. They're really hitting some deep cuts on some kiss me shit. Yeah, and I think it's only gonna get deeper. Mm -hmm. I think so too. So how about this? Kind of stoked. As we roll out the carpet on this one, (laughs) that's not an expression anyone uses. But (laughs) (laughs) but we'll still do it. What would be? Hold on, let me get the carpet. Let me just roll this out to show closure. (laughs) <laughs> what would be your uh, your ultimate fantasy if you could think of do you, want, uh, do you want me to go first I think we started this question but we never answered it yeah go alright here's mine about time a few hours after this would be my ultimate number one damn I don't think they would ever play that live but I if they played Exploding Boy with the Luther fame maybe now's the time a few mm-hmm. hours after this would be the ultimate Halo I think would be great 
I mean, these are all like B sides mostly, so yeah. it's a little digging deep. But like Halo, just would be fucking awesome live. Mm-hmm. Um, the upstairs room. Oh yeah, yeah I'd love to hear that. Like with guitars and stuff, that would be really cool. Yeah. Do, um, do, 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 do. Going back to B sides, and I'm pretty yeah. guaranteed they'll never play a Sugar Girl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I love that song. And finally, let me just pick one totally out of thin air. Let's say I want to hear Sinking, even though there's a good chance it's not super obscure. Yeah. And they could play it. It's a little more realistic, but they haven't played it in a long time, it feels like. but That's a solid one. It seems like that could be a good closer of an encore if they did a head on the door chunk or something. Yeah. But, but I would love to hear that live. I don't know if I've ever heard that live. I don't think so. Yeah. No. Maybe. Seems like know. somewhere in there. I had I wrote down all the ones we How could we've they seen. not play it? Yeah, it seems like super obvious, but I don't know if I ever... I don't know. What do you think? Any just doesn't have to be five, but just ones off the top of your head of like ones you wish they would play. They've really been hitting them, I guess. Like like exploding boy. Mm hmm. This is my jam, and I, I just want to hear like some of the weirder stuff off of like head on the door for some reason, and like some yeah. shit from the walk. Like you like you really hit upon like all the ones, all the ones like. Yeah. <laughs> Go the same, but a thousand hours. That's one I wish they would do. Uh, kiss like, me, kiss me. That'd be cool. And of course, I want to hear like, I want to hear like all cats are gray and shit. Like, yeah. I want to hear some Roto Toms. Like, I want to see their drummer. He has like a giant drum kit, but it's yeah. like he doesn't have any Roto Toms. <laughs> so it's like they can't do all this old shit. I'm sure they can make it work without the Roto Toms, but not for realsies. Like. Yeah. It's like I, I feel like they couldn't. Maybe they'll. I mean, it. have they played any shit off of Faith or like pornography? Done like other voices, primary. All the shit they normally do. Eh, not super regularly, but yeah, not much yet though. Yeah, like Hundred Years in Hanging Garden. I think are the only ones off of primary nah. or pornography, but. Like, I want to um, hear some deep cuts off of this. Yeah, that would be cool. The, you know, like, funeral party or something. Yeah! Awesome. Fuck yeah! They did a lot of those on the Blood Flowers tour when we saw them. I remember that being really cool. Where they did, like, all cats are gray and drowning. Yeah. And stuff. But, um, yeah, that would be cool. Like, kind of that era, too. It would be pretty cool. But, yeah, it's weird. The Japanese Whisper stuff, they never do any of those. Like, the dream... It's all even the machine and, and stuff sequencers. And, yeah. like, that's hard to fucking. But I mean, you think they could knock out some of those? But yeah, that would be Let tough. The Schecter, yeah, make drum <laughs> machines and sequencers. Not yet. I don't know. Maybe. And that's why it's weird that they're still doing it. Yeah. Schecter guitars. <laughs> that's a podcast in itself. I'm out. <laughs> See ya. I'm out. Talk hard. <laughs> As always, thanks, Donald, for coming down and having that discussion. And um, be sure to subscribe to The Holy Hour on iTunes and rate us and rank us. Do whatever they they want you to do over there. And um, be sure that way you can follow us as soon as the episodes pop up. Sometimes it takes a little while for iTunes to kick it in when we put it on the hosting site there. But if you're subscribed, you get it instantly. So be sure to subscribe. Um, go over to Instagram, check us out at the Holy Hour Podcast, where you'll get updates on episodes, pictures, and little tidbits here and there too. And um, then go on over to Facebook and find the Facebook group that we've started for the Holy Hour Podcast on Facebook, where we post each episode, and you can use the um, comment threads to comment on the episodes, and uh, there'll also be little links of things that we've talked about in the episodes throughout so you can check out more bonus material there and be sure to check out arusha's project push a cure fan documentary over at the website curefandocumentary.com there you'll find all the information you need such as facebook links instagram and email while you're there drop a few dollars in the donation bin and uh help out with this project you know that devotion isn't a crime so go and dive in check it out 
And um, until then, we'll see you soon here on the Holy Hour. Uh, thanks for listening. Yes.